However, it's very important for us to introduce some other ideas now because when we get in later in algebra, you'll be using them over and over again. Any time you have these things multiplied like this, if you have sort of like a common term on the top that's also on the bottom, it doesn't matter where it is because these are all going to be multiplied together anyway, but if you have it on the top and on the bottom like this, then I can simply strike through them and sort of cancel them out. Now really what you're doing, you're not really canceling them, they're not really disappearing. It's just that what's really happening here is, if you think about it, let's, let's do a little bit of an aside here and you'll see why we're doing this. If we were to do this, it would be 5 times 18 on the top, but then we would be dividing by 12 times 5 on the bottom. So ultimately what we're doing here is we're multiplying by 5 on the top because of this 5, but then we're going to turn around and just divide by 5 again. So we've multiplied by 5 on the top, but then we just divide by 5. So, you know, it's just like taking, you know, what if we take 1 times 2, right? That's going to give us 2. Right? And then we take 2 and then divide it by 2 again, this answer and divide it by 2 again, and that's just going to give us 1. So the 2, the fact that we multiply by 2 and then we divide it by 2, really disappears. We end up with the same number that we started with. If you take 3 and then multiply by 4 and then just turn around and divide by 4, then the 4s really don't do anything. They, they basically disappear because you've multiplied by it and then you divide it by it. Well, that's exactly what we're doing here. We're multiplying by the 5, but then we're dividing by the 5. So in fact, they really kind of disappear. And really, if you want to really be technical about it, they don't really disappear. It's just that they're dividing out. 5 divided by this 5 on the bottom is you're getting a 1 here and a 1 here. So in other words, you can think of it any way you want. You can think of them disappearing because of this cancellation, but you can also think of them as, uh, as, as disappearing and leaving a 1 behind because we're, they're dividing out from one another. Now let me also show you something else that we can do in this fraction to simplify it. Um, we could now at this point take 1, because this 5's are gone now, we could take this 1 times the 18 and get a new numerator, 12 times the 1 and get a new denominator, and then we could simplify that. That's also possible. But we can actually simplify more ahead of time here, uh, because this is all multiplied together. Notice that we have 18 and 12, okay? Can I divide both by something to make it simpler? Well, I can, I can divide this guy by 6. I can divide 6 into 18, and I can divide 6 into 12. So when I divide the 6 into 12, 12 divided by 6 gives me 2. So I scratch that out with a single line and put a 2 there. 18 divided by 6, I put a line and I say 3. So what I have done is totally simplified this fraction. Let me continue on and we'll come back and go over this part a little bit more. All of the big numbers are now gone. We have a 1 times a 3, giving us 3. We have now a 2 left over, times a 1, giving us a 2. And this is totally simplified, 3 halves. So I want to make absolutely clear, if you didn't do any of this simplification, 5 times 18 would give you a big number on the top, 12 times 5 would give you a big number, that's 60, that would be on the bottom. But see, then you would have an answer that you would definitely have to simplify again. right? You'd have to divide by top and bottom, and you have to get it down into simplest terms, which would give you this answer, by the way. All we're doing is we're doing the simplification ahead of time. So we don't have to deal with the big multiplication. We're looking at the 12 and the 18 and we're saying, hey, I can divide both of those by 6. 12 divided by 6 gives me 2. 18 divided by 6 gives me 3. So I mark them out with a single line. Don't scratch it out. Just mark it out and write those numbers down. Okay? And then notice I explained that these are kind of canceling, but it's really the same thing. I have a 5 on the top and a 5 on the bottom. So I can think of it, if I want, as dividing by 5 here. That gives me the 1. Down here, I'm also dividing by 5, giving me the 1. So again, I'm doing whatever I want to the top and the bottom of these fractions as long as I'm consistent. Divide by 6, divide by 6. Divide by 5, divide by 5. When I do that, I get new fractions that are much simpler and that can be readily multiplied. I didn't have to pull out a calculator to do this multiplication. I just get the answer directly. Okay? So what we're going to do is just keep on working a lot of problems here. If this idea is a little foreign to you, don't worry about it because we're going to do a lot of these things and it will become very clear. What if I had 17 thirty-fourths multiplied by 3 sixths? Okay?